Hey guys, Joe Pozinski, Advanced Innovations here. Thank you for stopping by. Thank you to all my new subscribers and everyone that continues to engage me in conversation, comments, thumbs up, everything. Keeps me motivated. Thank you very much. I am grateful and flattered by your support. Today I'm going to post a topic that's going to take some stress out of some of your lives and infuriate some of you. So I hope that uh, it's more of a stress reliever for a lot of you guys, but I do welcome your challenges on this topic. I know there's gonna be a bunch of them. Please post them in the line below and we'll go back and forth. Anyway, I'm gonna start on the board today and we're gonna go over to the computer in a minute and I'm gonna back up what I'm saying with digital models that pretty much prove exactly what I'm saying. So the topic today is, the 29 degree, 29 and a half degree, 30 degree setting on your compound when you're threading. Now, if you're like me and every other guy that's ever run an engine lathe, you were probably told, set your compound at 29 degrees, 29 and a half degrees, make sure you got it, lock it down, or dear God, the sky's gonna open up and it's gonna rain frogs and the apocalypse is gonna happen and it's gonna be the end of the world and all, you know, any number of good things is, is uh, gonna happen. Anyway, that being said, Here's the big question. 30 degrees, 29 degrees, 29 and a half degrees. What does it mean? Why do you need it? Do you need it? And what's happening with the tool while you're cutting? Okay, well, let's start with 30 degrees. Since 30 degrees is supposed to be the magic, fantastic, everything is fine and happy uh, setting. Let's draw a quickie little graphic down here. I wanna show you exactly what's going on with a 30 degree tool. Let's say here's the OD of your part. Here's your first pass. I hope you can see that. OD of the tool, first pass. Now the second pass at 30 degrees. I just watched a video online where a guy, uh, the lazy machinist, if you haven't looked him up, look him up. Used a bunch of different color markers and it's just absolutely perfect the way to do it. Let's say your compound is set at 30 degrees. 30 degrees being half the tool, right? Because it's a 60 degree thread. Let's assume it's a 60 degree thread, most of them are. So your next cut moves the tool along this edge, and there's your second cut. Now anybody that says, oh, the tool's not cutting on the right-hand side because it's set at 30 degrees. Well, guys, what is that? I'm saying that as the tool plunges, it's absolutely cutting on that side. Some people will say, you're making this thread with a trajectory and the entire thread is being formed by this surface. Well, if that was true, you would think that you wouldn't even need that side of the tool. So I dare anybody out there to take their 60 degree tool and split it and still cut a good thread without going in increments of two ten thousandths of an inch, of course, in which time you'd be single pointing that angle, and that's not fair, that's cheating. If the 30 degree movement were the trajectory of the cut and the compound is stationary on the cross slide, you could dial in a 30 degree angle with a tool that looks like this. Yes, you could do that, but since the 30 degree movement is a depth movement and the trajectory of the cut is a helix, you have right side contact even at 30 degrees. It's minimal and it's regulated to the depth of the cut that you dialed in, but yes, you have contact on the right side of your tool even at 30 degrees. So what happens at 29 or 29 and a half degrees? Well, let's draw that too. You have the OD of your part. I'm going to draw two of them here so you can see what's going on. Hopefully a little bit better than the last time. Let's say you're going straight in. When you go straight in, the chip load is exactly the same on either side of the tool. Now until you swing that tool around and make that chip load bias to the left side, you will still have 
minimal, minimal, minimal surface contact here. And the bias of the tool on the left hand side. Now we're talking this gap right here, this calculated contact is tenths, ten thousandths of an inch feather edge cutting. But nonetheless, you still have the depth of the cut on the right hand side and the potential for full side contact when you get where you're going. So I'm going to show you these circumstances over on the digital model that I have prepared. And maybe it'll be a little bit clearer. Okay. Let's take a walk over to the computer and take a look. These are the two parts that I'm going to use for the demonstration. The gray part is a single thread profile, and the yellow part is your threading tool. Both of them are symmetrical 60 degree notches, and both of them have a six thousandths of an inch flat at the tip and the root of each feature. Each part also has its own 29 and a half degree alignment plane for later on. I'm going to constrain the threading tool so that the top of the tool is even with the top of that part and that the center line of each piece lines up. And you can see that that's a very accurate tool is going in that notch. I can make it constrained exactly, but for this demonstration, I just want to illustrate if you're plunging straight in with your cross slide, and forgive my voice, allergies are kicking my butt. As you plunge straight in with your cross slide, you can see the overlap area in gray here is your chip load. So it's a very symmetrical, very even chip load, but a lot of surface contact, which is the reason uh, you've probably been told to set your compound at 29, 29 and a half, 30, somewhere thereabouts. Nothing greater than 30, though, because then you ruin the thread a geometry, the profile of your cut geometry, and it's just not going to end well. <clears throat> so do not go over 30. Uh, realistically, you don't even have to hit the 29. Anything close is good, but don't go over. All right, that's what happens if you plunge straight in. Let's take a look at the myth that there's no right side cutting if you set your tool or you set your compound at 30 degrees. I'm going to go back in and I'm going to align the right hand side of this tool with the right hand side of that slot and you can see that it's sliding like it's mated which in fact it is absolutely on the exact same plane and I'm going to slide the tool in a little bit to simulate a depth of cut there you go now the 30 degree setting on your compound is the tool movement but it's not your trajectory of the cut if everything was stationary and you were back turning an angle then you'd only be using one side of this tool but since this is a thread this is a form tool and you absolutely have right side contact here you can see it this minor section of the right hand side of the tool the tip and the entire left hand side now the cut is heavily biased to the left and your surface contact is reduced by about 50% or less. So it's less strain on the machine, less chance of chatter, but the right hand side is still making contact. I'm going to go for a global interference check here. This is where the computer was going to show me exactly what's touching and what isn't touching. I go for a model analysis, a global interference, and I'll say compute. And when I do, I can almost guarantee that this little section here is going to light up the flat this entire side and then the wedge coming back so let's hit the compute button and see what happens boom there you go anything highlighted in red is what the tool load would be is what the chip would be and what the impact on the part would be if you took this cut on this part so here's your minimal right side contact 
I'll get that a little closer to the camera. You can see that the tool moved in at 30 degrees. Here's your minimal right side contact. Here's your tip contact. And the entire left side of your tool is now engaged as well. So to say that there's no contact at a 30 degree setting is false as well. The depth of the contact is restricted to how much you dial in, of course. But nonetheless, this part of your form tool is required to maintain a continuous 30 degree profile of your finished feature. And let's go set it on the 29 and a half degree plane and see what happens there. I'm going to start from scratch. I'm going to set the top of the tool even with the top of the part. And now I'm going to set the 29 and a half degree datum plane, which is this one right here that's lighting up, to the 29 and a half degree plane on the part. Okay. And that I like. Now, very much like what just happened with the 30 degree cut, I'm going to go a little bit deeper with this particular cut so that I can emphasize the right side contact potential is greater at 29, 29 and a half degrees than it is at 30 degrees. You're still going to have the cutting area on the very tip of the tool as you did with the 30 degree setting. So we can expect to still see a, a very solid contact on the tip of the tool, but the potential exists for a half degree contact area on the right hand side of the tool. The tool and the cut are always going to be parallel, so whatever the cut is, it's going to be tenths of an inch, uh, not an actual tenth of an inch, but a ten thousandths of an inch as compared to the depth. It's a, I think it's like a 15 to 1 ratio at 60 degrees. So I'm going to take this tool and I'm going to drive this tool in relatively deep, and we're going to see what the global interference is. That's not fair. Let's back it off a little bit. Okay, now if everybody's, everybody's uh, argument is correct, we should have solid contact up here like we witnessed in the 30 degree demonstration. Tip and full left side contact, but I say that this area around here is going to be highlighted as well because it's closer to the straight in plunge geometry than it is to the 30 plunge geometry or more similar to it, let's put it that way. Let's go back to the model analysis, ask for a global interference, and I'm looking for this whole right side here to light up, and it sure did. See the green? There's your, there's your interference. The right side contact at 29 and a half degrees is minimal. The tool and the geometry of the previous cut will always be parallel, so as it moves in, the cut is 99% biased to the left side, but the right side still has this feather potential, which could be so small that either the tool deflects and won't cut it, refuses to cut it, or you can, like some other operators, put tension on the hand wheel, which is a really good thing to do because you don't want your uh, thread getting drunk, they call that. Uh, so keep a little bit of tension on the hand wheel. That's a very good solid practice and a very experienced practice. But you can see you have a very uh, large tip contact and then a very small potential for contact all the way through to the end of the thread. So if you're new at this and someone says, make sure you hit that 29 degree mark, you know what, get close, get 27, 28 degrees, 25 degrees, it really doesn't matter. Just don't go over 30 degrees and your thread is going to come out just fine. If you have a very large rigid machine and you want to set your tool square onto the part and dial in with the cross slide, 
Uh, I've done it that way for 40 years and I've never blown a thread. Of course, industrial machinery is very rigid and you can get away with that. So if you have a home shop or a smaller machine that has less uh, rigidity than some of the bigger stuff, throw the compound at an angle and have at it. But there you go, guys. No matter what you set that compound on, both sides of the tool are going to cut. It just uh, will determine how much of each side of the tool is going to cut, but they will always both contribute to the final geometry. That's all I got. All right, guys. Well, I hope that wasn't too boring, but uh, the whole 29 and a half degree thing, naturally on a machine that's not very rigid, the closer you get to 30 degrees without exceeding 30 degrees, the chances are the better thread result you are going to have because the majority of the tool load, not clearance, is on the left hand side of the cutting tool. Okay, so 29 and a half degrees is not a bad idea, but it's not critical and it should still cut or at least feather or definitely make contact at the 29 and a half. But don't kill yourself to do it because it's not necessary. So if somebody says 29 and a half degrees and you want to whip it at 28 degrees, 25 degrees, it doesn't matter. You're still going to get a good thread and the majority of your cut load is going to be biased to the left hand side of the tool. That's all I got. I hope that clears some things up. By all means, if you don't agree with this, put it in the comment line below and let's talk about it. But I think the demonstration that I just gave you is uh, pretty rock solid. So anyway, Joe Pizinski Advanced Innovations, Austin, Texas. Thanks for watching. I'm out.